Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Today video is on .NET 7 Blazor WebAssembly JWT Authentication Series. So this is first video. In this video, we are going to create Blazor WebAssembly application and then we are going to add user registration form and we will implement the form validations to create dotnet 7 project we must have visual studio 2022 with the latest version so here is my vs 2022 let's select blazor and select blazor webassembly app click on next so let's give a name to the project. Okay, that is my project name. And jwt.auth is my solution name. And also select the location where you want to create the project. Click on next. Here we have to select the latest that is dotnet 7 framework okay and then create okay here is my blazor webassembly project so first let's run it okay this is the default blazor webassembly template we get okay and it is built on bootstrap 5 so for this demo i am going to use mudblazor ui library so first let's try to integrate the mudblazor library go to mudblazor official website click on getting started Okay, here I am doing manual installation. So the first thing is we have to install the Mudblazor package. Okay, get back to our VS and right click on the packages and go to manage NuGet packages. Search for Mudblazor. Okay, this package we need to install. So here green tick mark we can observe that says package installed. And we can observe in the packages references as well. Okay, that is first step. And next, we need to add this namespace into the underscore imports file. So here, underscore imports file and add it. So this file is for registering the namespaces globally. Next, we need to add these CSS links in our index.html. So copy them and go to ww root folder. Here is the index.html file. Okay, just above closing head tag add CSS links. So let's get rid of bootstrap CSS links here. So comment out them. And the next we need to add the script tag okay in the index.html file so here let's add it just above the closing body tag and next we have to register the add mud service by mud service in the program.cs file Okay. 
here I can add it and it will automatically imports the mudblazer dot services namespace okay and next these are the components need to be registered at root level that means at main dot razor file okay let's design a layout previously this is bootstrap layout right it is disturbed because we have commented out the bootstrap styles okay so if i go to main dot layout in the shared folder main dot layout this is the like a master template and here you can see at the red body razor syntax right so at this area page level components gets renders okay now instead of this i want to add mudblazer components to display the styling okay for that go to layout section here is the basic layout so copy this okay and add it here okay if i run again and if you okay now we are rendering the content with the help of mudblazer okay so for now there is no styling appear appearing right so let's add a tab bar in our application so for that go to docs components and app bar okay i want to configure this one okay and app bar so copy this add it just above the mud main content okay so for now let me remove this okay let me simply add a h3 tag and jwt auth demo i'm heading okay let's check now okay now we get nice nav bar and there is big space right that is due to this fixed false so remove the attribute okay so now let's create the user registration form component okay so inside the pages let me create one more folder like accounts okay so inside of it let's add the new component so i will name it like registration okay this is our registration razor component so let's define route for it so using at the rate page directive we can define route and double quotes and the route starts with slash okay and i can define the route now so like registration okay let's check whether we are able to access this component or not okay now i can access like registration okay here you can see the text like registration that is nothing but this h3 tag so we can confirm we are able to access our registration page okay okay now instead of navigating through url let me add this registration menu link on this app bar okay for that i can use hypertext link component here link component okay so let me copy this okay and go to our main layout and inside of the app bar let me add it so here 
I can specify my route slash registration and change the label. Okay, now let's check. So here it is not visible, that is because, but if you hover here, there is a mouse. Okay, so let me first go to home page. Home page, okay. And if I click on this invisible link, see, I am able to navigate, right? So let's make the label visible. Okay, to make label visible, I can add color attribute, okay? And I can specify color dot inherit. So it's going to inherit the default color. Okay, now I am able to see the registration link. So I want this registration at the right hand side corner. So for that I can use a component like mud spacer. Okay. And I can use self closing element. Okay. Now instead of this H3 tag, I want to configure the muddling component and on clicking it, we must navigate to home page. Okay, so copy this. Okay. And I had here and href will be home page. And let me change the label and give the here. Okay, I can remove this and now check. Okay. Now if I click on it. I am on home page. If I click on registration, I am on the registration page. So let me remove the underline here. Okay. So to remove the underline, we have underline attribute. Okay. So specify underline none for both the links. Okay, now there is no underline. Now let's try to add the user registration form here. Okay, so for our demo, our registration form contains first name, last name, email, password, and confirm password. These are the fields we are going to add in our form. Okay, to add the form. Go to Mudblazer and go to Forms and Input. Okay. And go to Form. So, for this demo, I am going to use Fluent Validation Library. Okay. To apply validation rules for our form. Okay. So, let's try to copy this sample. Okay. And if I go here, there is a mud card, right? Yeah, I don't want entire form. So first let's render the mud card component. So go to registration form, add mud card. Okay. And next, here there is a mud form component. Okay, let's add it. Okay, and then there is a mud card content inside of it contains form fields. Okay, so let's add mud card content component. Okay, and let me copy one of the form field. Okay, so add it here. Let's add 
three, four, five. So here, if you observe to bind the form or to read the form data, we must have a form model, right? So first, let's create the form model, okay? So let me create a new folder like view models. Okay. Inside of it, let's add folder like accounts. And let me create a view model that I am going to use as my form model. Okay. Registration VM. So let's define the form field properties here. Okay. Public string first name. Okay. Public string last name. Public string email. Public string password. Public string confirm password okay this is my registration VM and I am going to use it as form model okay so to use it as a form model, first register that VM or initialize that VM in our component. So before registering the VM, let's register its namespace, okay? In the underscore imports dot laser file. Auth laser UI view models dot accounts and now I can easily access any file inside of that folder okay so registration model and initialize the model okay now this model must be configured with our mud form for that there is a attribute like model and as in the our register model variable to the model attribute okay register model okay now i can bind the each individual property of the model to the each field okay so register model dot first name okay same thing must be added to for attribute okay last name dot last name dot email dot email password password confirm password okay and let's change the label of the each field so first name 
last name, email, and password. Confirm password. Okay, now let's check the form output. Okay, now we got the form. So now let's reduce the size of the form and let's try to center the form. Okay, to reduce and center the size of the form, here let's have a div. Sorry, normal div, or you can use a mud container component as well. Okay, and let's add a class here and deflex and justify center. Okay, let's add entire container mud card inside of it and now specify some width so capital w and width so i will specify like them 500 pixels okay now let's check the output okay now form is centered but it is there is no spacing with the app bar, right? So to get some margin on all sides, let's add MA6 margin at all sides. Okay, now little better. Now let's add a heading also. Okay, so for that, let me use one more div of same kind okay add it here and add a closing div tag okay and add h3 tag and user registration form okay let's check the output okay but to display it much more effective way, let's use the mud chip component. Okay. So chip component, mud chip component. And add color attribute to it. So color equal to color dot primary. Okay, and move our H3 tag inside mud chip. Okay, let's check. Okay, now it is much better. And now let's add the button here. Okay, to add the button. So here let me copy. Okay, this mud card actions. Okay. So after the mud card content, add the mud card action. So this is our button, okay, of color primary color and ML auto margin left auto. That means it's going to render at the right side. And there is a click for now. Let remove the click event, okay, and label the button like register okay let's check okay, we got the register button as well okay and we can enter any form details here okay and password but if you observe password is displaying right so password must be represented in dots right when the user enter the data so for that we can use one of the attribute like input type okay so input type equal to password same attribute decorate for confirm password as well 
Okay. Now let's check. So now passwords are coming in dots. Try to implement the validation using Fluent Validation Library. So for that, first we need to install the Fluent Validation Library. Okay, go to Manage NuKid Packages, search like Fluent Validation. Okay, Validations. So we can install the Fluent val Validation, this library. Okay, let's install it. Okay, and here is the green tick mark that represents package installed. And we can check here as well. Okay, now we can apply the form validation rules for this model. So for that, let's create a validation model. Okay, so I will create inside of the second folder itself. So I will name it like Registration Validation VM. Okay, it inherits abstract and also register the fluent validation namespace under the imports dot razor. Okay, so fluent validation. So now validator okay that comes from fluent validation and it will have a generic type okay here we need to add our model original model that is register vm okay so now in this registration validation model i can apply validation rules for registration vm Okay, now add the constructor. Okay, inside of the constructor, I can apply validation rules. Okay, so something like rule for okay, first name, I will apply a rule like no empty, means that field cannot be empty. Okay, rule for last name same no empty okay and rule for email okay here i can apply email address okay so that going to check valid email or not okay and now i am going to add rules for my password Okay, so here comes our rules. So I have already prepared set of rules for my password. So let me copy paste them. Okay, here is my set of rules for password. Let's walk through them. Okay, here no empty means password cannot be empty and I can specify my custom message. If you don't specify also based on the property name, fluent validation can add the message okay but using with message we can explicitly specify the message for each rule okay so here empty if it is and its message is here and we are expecting minimum length of password is six and its message validation message and maximum length 16 and validation message and here it is checking for a match and here apply rejects like password should contains at least one uppercase and next rejects rule is password should contains at least one lower case and next match rejects rule is password should contains at least one number and next rejects is password should contain special character like either one of the character like at the rate exclamatory question mark space star Dot. Okay, so these are all rules can make my password more strong. Okay, and finally, let's apply a rule for or confirm password.
ओके तो कंफर्म पासवर्ड विल हैव ओनली वन रूल दैट इज इट शुड मैच द पासवर्ड वैल्यू सो फॉर दैट आई कैन यूज इक्वल एंड इन द इक्वल वी हैव टू स्पेसिफाई टू व्हिच प्रॉपर्टी द वैल्यू शुड बी इक्वल्स टू शुड बी इक्वल्स टू पासवर्ड ओके नाउ वी हैव टू क्रिएट अ एरो फंक्शन and that function is going to return collection of error messages okay so so to create that method i can take it from here okay so like this method so like this method should be added for every uh, validation class okay so here what is this method means this is a simple func okay it contains two input parameters one is object and string okay and it's going to return asynchronous of i collection of string okay this is the name of this func and here you can see the func with assigned with an arrow function so since the return type is asynchronous right so the arrow method starts with async and here you can observe two input parameters because in the func first two parameters are the input and second param the last parameter will be the output so here input parameter is model okay here input parameter is nothing but our register vm so change it to our register vm okay register vm so here what it is doing means using validate async method that comes from fluent validation and it is create in the context for the form with the help of form model okay and here it is including the all the properties of this model okay if every form field satisfy all the rules okay the result dot valid is valid will become true and then error message collection will be empty if it is not true that means it contains some error in that case here we are getting all the error collection okay and we are going to return that error collection and this error collection will be mapped to the form okay so how we how we this function we will use let's understand now so go to the registration dot razor component now let's initialize our register validation model also okay so register validation model so validation model and initialize it okay now to enable the validation Okay, to enable the validation, I can use attribute like validation. Okay, to this validation, I have to assign this func validate value func. Okay, so valid validation validation. Okay, so validation model dot validate value okay so like this all the error messages will be assigned to this validation property okay now let's check whether we are able to fire the validation messages or not Okay, now enter something. Let's give empty form. See, everything is firing. Empty first name. Once you touch the field, validation starts firing. Okay, email. See, this is not a valid email. If I enter valid email like this, see, now the error message is gone. Okay. Now let's go to password. See. Here you can see password suggestion messages like at least one upper character. 
now let me give a valid password okay see now it is valid if i give invalid see but it is showing my password value right that means i cannot i have to specify custom message so go to registration vm and here let me add with message okay so i will give a message like confirm password must be equal to password okay so now it won't display the password explicitly so let's go again okay let me give a valid password now okay now see confirm password must equal password okay and if i give same exact password see now it is gone okay so like this we can find the validation error messages i want to find validation error messages when user directly with so let me refresh the page now empty form right if user click on register button also i want to find the validation messages on empty form so for that i have to create a method here okay so that method is like registration method okay private async task register async okay so first i want to get the form instance so that i can validate the form so to get the form i will use ref attribute okay so i will create a variable like mud form and a variable like form okay so i am going to assign the form mud form variable to ref now form will give entire control into this variable form variable okay now i can use this form variable here okay in this method so i can first validate the form so form dot validate okay so this validate is a asynchronous method so you have to await it okay now after validation method invoke we can check form is valid or not okay so when it is valid then only here we are going to invoke the a registration api call okay, for now let's add the comment registration api call okay now let me register this registration api call so create a on click okay event and add our register async method okay now check okay now if i click directly register see all our form field validations are invoked okay so that's all about creating a form and adding fluent validation message rules so next we are going to create api project and we are going to implement the user registration endpoint thank you so much for watching this video i hope this video delivered some useful content to you all if you like the video please do support by subscribing to channel and please don't forget to like and share the video soon we are going to meet with new content until then signing off